Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another day of the Max Potential Habits podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Amanda Barrientes, and we have Tamika Chapman on today. And I am super psyched because she is America's number one perseverance mindset coach. And I want to remind all of you, I love the word perseverance. Her and I had this conversation pre-show. The definition of perseverance is persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. So for all of those of you listening, you know that I'm big on NFA strategies to help you thrive in your life and business. That's why we talk about habits here because perseverance is a habit. It's you showing up to the game of your life, of your business every day with that mindset of perseverance where you go, okay, there's a challenge, there's a delay, but I'm gonna keep on committing to my quest, my vision, fulfilling what I wanna create every day of my life. So it's really exciting to have Tamika on who is the author of a book called The Power of Perseverance where she interviews women who share their journey of overcoming struggles who talk about their stories of what they did to persevere. She also has a podcast and magazine called Women on the Verge Media. She is a powerhouse. So welcome to the show today, Tamika. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Amanda, for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and speak and and share with your audience. uh, Absolutely. The power of perseverance. Yes, (laughs) we're we're gonna dive super deep. Yes, perseverance is my favorite word as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Like I always think of what some pa- what power words are, and I love the word you know decision. I love commitment. Perseverance is up there at the top because it's such a it's one of those mindsets where you go, okay, I'm I'm going to be radically responsible for my life. I'm going to decide to take action every day, and I'm going to trust that at in the long term, if I'm patient enough, I'll get where I want to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So it. share your backstory. Uh, let listeners know, how did you step into the field of coaching and why do you love perseverance so much? Oh, wow. 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 So that could take a day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you the brief, I'll give yeah. you the brief description or the brief um, background. So my journey uh, of perseverance actually started about 20 years ago now, 20, 21 years ago. And it started when I became, um, well, after my husband and I married, you know, naturally we wanted to have children, naturally we wanted to start a family. And for whatever reason, it just wasn't happening. It did not happen the way that I thought it would happen. And with that, it started a whole journey of, okay, when is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? Will it ever happen? And, and year after year, day after day, nothing would happen, nothing would happen. And it took 18 years, 18 long years of persevering, um, persevering each time, each month I had a negative um, test result, uh, persevering through that to say, okay, okay, I can, I can hold on a little longer. I can do this. It's going to happen. I just have to keep believing and keep having faith that this is what I want and it's going to happen. And so, yes, 18 years of a journey to motherhood and a lot of people probably wouldn't last that long. They'd probably give up and say, okay, I'm done. I, I can't do it anymore. Um, but yes, 18 long years is where my perseverance actually started. Now, you know, even along the way, you know, with career, with life choices, some more than times it's a struggle to that as well. It's a long time of waiting for things to happen. You know, with career, we want um promotions and raises and title changes and stuff and so it takes perseverance to make it through that as well and so yes perseverance it you know for me everybody's journey don't have to be the same as mine however it's a journey and we have to be willing to stay in it and stick with it in order to see success on the other side now what I also will say is that you know for me going into coaching it was all about recognizing that there are women all over the world, um, not just here local to me, that actually needed to have a mindset shift. They needed to learn how to, you know, shift from, okay, you know, this is what I want. How do I get it? You know, okay, Mm -hmm. I want it right now, but you can't have it right now. That's not the way life works. We, you know, so many people have this microwave mentality and we have to move from the microwave mentality to understanding that 
things that are meant to be here for us sometimes will take a little longer. But as long as we are persistent in our goings and our doings, it will eventually happen for us. And so, yes, I love the, to be able to speak to other women and help them move forward and help them move beyond where they, where they currently are to, you know, having the life that they desire. Absolutely living life, living and not just merely existing anymore. Mm. So good. I, I, <laughs> I've heard this term many times recently, the microwave mentality. And it's so true. It's like it, I, working with business owners, I often think about how business is a lot like ha having a baby, right? It's like it's in the newborn stage. There's a massive learning curve. You've got to be very patient, very dedicated, and so committed that you're in that mindset of no matter what happens, I'm not going to leave my baby, right? Like there's going to be roadblocks. Yeah. There's going to be challenges that you can't foresee. And it's that persistence and patience piece that's so powerful mm -hmm. instead of going like, okay, let's blast it in the microwave. My business is going to succeed in three days or even 30 days, right? Like there's a lot of stuff out there. It's like, let's have something happen. You can have a lot happen in 30 days, but you're not going to, you know, go from zero startup, not knowing anything about business to six figure income in 30 days. Very unlikely overnight success is often talked about, but doesn't always happen for most people. It's that perseverance and patience piece. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I was talking to somebody the other day about overnight success and what that really is and yeah. how it really didn't happen overnight. Right. No, <laughs> They don't no. see all the years that you put into, you know, the work and put into the training and the learning in order to get to where you are. So it's not a, yeah. such, it's not a, a such thing as just dropping in your lap and it's just happening. It's because you put the work in, you did the work in order to get where you are, to have that connect, to have that, that thing happen for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Well, first congratulations on, I hear your baby. So I could, you, you have your baby, right? How old, how old now? Do you have one? One? I have two. Two. Oh my God. Have two. Okay. They were back, back nine months, well, 16 months apart. Wow. Um, one is he's three and my that's my oldest and my daughter um will be two and okay yeah. so so finally after yes. all of that waiting and working and wondering and hoping and yeah yes. wow congratulations how, thank you I appreciate i'm curious it. for you you know now that you have your babies and and you're building businesses how uh, do you see the parallels between those two things yes <laughs> I, um, there's definitely much parallel in, in both, you know, they're both starting at an infant level. They both start at an infant um, level and move into, um, you know, the seasoned <laughs> um, little people that they are. And, you know, that's yeah. how it is with business, you know, with your business, you start at a point of an idea. You start at a point of you know, not understanding everything, but having to read and, and, and the, going through the experience of actually um, living in it and seeing what works for you. Because mm -hmm. just like parenting, every business, it will have its growing pains. Every business will have different things that happen. No business is the same. No two businesses are the same, just like no two children are the same. Um, and so, yes, there's definitely parallels in that. Um, right now, I have two toddlers here in my house who, who feels that they run my house. Um, and with that, you know, when you get around that stage in business, you know, the two, the two year mark, the three year mark, you start to feel a little bit of a stride that you have in going through it. So now you can, you know, you can bob and weave a little bit better yeah. <laughs> when, you know, different challenges and, and things may happen. So yes, there's definitely parallel, there's definitely some, some uh, major similarities and parallel um, things that happen with parenting as well as business. You can definitely um, see that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so it's so fun to getting to do a live because I get to see everything that's happening in the scene, you know? I know right? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Yes. I yeah. thought that she'd stay out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that she'd stay out for a while, but it's not the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, this well, and, and I think that's that, right. It's the beauty of building a business at home too, where you really get to integrate yeah. your family into your daily routine. And, you know, I, I love podcasting for that reason too, because it's like, oh, someday, you know, my kids are home, my dog's barking. There's all these things going on. It's like, hey, this is my life. I get to work from home and I get to do it the way I want to do it. And sometimes it includes 
you know, a lot of dis distractions. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean, for you, that's, it's interesting because my kids are a lot older. So, you know, my business, you know, they're in that stage of life where they just want to explore and do their thing. We spend a lot of time together, but it's also like they don't need me in the same way. And so I talk a lot about and think how my business has become my new newborn. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm the first, I'm, a, I'm just my second year into business and I'm like, oh, this, it's like nurturing a baby, you know, it's like, it takes daily yeah. nurturing, it takes constant care, it takes me really being uh -huh. committed and, and having all those pieces we're talking about. Um, I would love to hear, so you, for your book, The Power of Perseverance, you interviewed 10 women and they shared their journeys of where they've been. To share with listeners some of the main takeaways that you learned about perseverance and struggle. Oh my gosh. So, you know, being, first of all, being a perseverance mindset coach, I established my own, my own system of that I call the five pillars of perseverance. Mm -hmm. And for me, it takes you from beginning to the end. It takes you from beginning to the end, but it allows you to be human. It allows you to feel it allows you to understand that not everything happens the way that you think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And interviewing, not necessarily interviewing, but they wrote a chapter in this book, right? And with that, I learned so much more about different levels of perseverance um, and different ways that they, because of how they experience perseverance. And so for that, I have a few women who, um, experience domestic violence mm -hmm. you know and how do you persevere through that how do you yeah. keep going and 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 making it okay to you know have the mindset to come out of that because you don't want to be in it nobody wants to be in a domestic violence situation but you have to get to the mindset that enough is enough yeah. you know yeah there there's some ladies who talk about their personal journeys of being raised and um, in a Christian home and how, you know, that not necessarily affected them, but how it changed the course of their life and how they knew life to be. And so with that, again, perseverance, how did you persevere through, you know, what it is that you felt you were called to do, but what your mind or what society was now telling you that you should do. So again, it deals with, you know, keeping your head level staying within what it is your goal is, what it is that you know your desires and purpose and passion is and moving forward with that. And so, yes, it, it's amazing um, to hear other people's stories. You know, I love to read other people's stories because you learn so much more that yeah. you may not have learned. Um, but yeah, again, I have my five pillars of perseverance that I always, res I go back to at any time I'm not, fully aware of what it is that I'm, well, uh, of a choice or decision that I'm making. I go back to my five pillars to ensure that that's what it is that I am doing. Hold on. Hold on um, but yes, that's what I do. Okay. Will you share with listeners what the five pillars are? Absolutely. So the first pillar of perseverance that I teach and speak and live is understanding that your, your setbacks are actually stepping stones. Mm. don't feel that you are a failure don't feel that you can't accomplish something just because it didn't go according to your plan again it taps into that whole microwave mentality that we as society has just jumped into because of social media mm -hmm. <laughs> right and so and um, with that just understand that your setbacks are not failures they are stepping stones to teach you lessons so that the next time that you approach that goal or you go back to it so that you can accomplish it you have learned what not to do mm -hmm. and so that's the first step the second step the second and third steps go hand in hand and those are revealing and releasing the ppps <laughs> not the paycheck protection program we are talking about people places and possessions how mm -hmm. do you reveal the people places and possessions that serve you no good how do you reveal that? What does it feel like? What does it look like? You know, and when I talk about possessions, it's not necessarily material things, but possession of fear and doubt in your mind as well. You know, the, the fears and doubts that you've allowed society to come in and place there. And now you wake up and you singing it like it's sung on repeat because it's all you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do you reveal that those things? And then how do you release it? 
So we go through the process of releasing all of the PPPs. How do you release those things that are no good for you? What does that look like? What does it feel like? How are you feeling right now because you're not releasing all of this? And sometimes it can be hard to release the things that we know as normal. Mm -hmm. But when we are destined for greater, when we want greater, when we're tired of being sick and tired, we will definitely start to release those things that are no good for us. And then step number four is take the first step. A lot of times people say that, you know, the first step is the hardest step. I say absolutely not. I say that the first step is your sweetest step because you've gone through all the crap you've had to go through in order to get to this point, to taking a first step. You've gone through, you know, accepting that you're not a failure. You've gone through revealing and releasing all the crap that's been holding you back. So when you get ready to take that step, it's going to feel really, really good that you are now doing something for you. You're doing mm. something that you want to do and how you want to do it, not allowing everybody else to have a say in what it is that you're doing. And then step number five, well, pillar number five is celebrate yourself. <laughs> Too many times we wait until the end to celebrate our big, big goals, but celebrate yeah. the small steps, celebrate your small wins, because that's what's going to keep you going. That's how you're going to continue to keep going, which is what perseverance is. You're going to be able to keep going because you're allowing yourself to celebrate your little wins to get to your big goals. And those are the five pillars of perseverance that I speak, teach, and live by. Okay, let me summarize because I missed, I think I missed number three. Maybe you said it and I missed it, but I want to summarize to make sure I got them all. <laughs> so number one, setbacks are stepping stones. Number two, reveal and release. Number three, I didn't write down. <laughs> number two, reveal, and number three is release. Oh, that's why. There we go. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, go hand okay. Hand. Number two and three go hand in hand. With okay. Revealing and revealing. Great. Okay. So reveal. And this idea behind revealing, talk about that a little bit because some people might not know. I have good ideas about what that looks like, but, you know, share some revealing strategies for people because I think that that's very, very powerful about raising conscious intention. Absolutely. Awareness. Absolutely. So revealing. First, what I always tell any of my clients to do is get a journal, get a journal and get a good pen. Matter of fact, get a pack of pens because you have, you have a lot of writing to do. And so <laughs> reveal when it comes to people, then places and then possessions. So reveal the, think about the people who are in your life. Who are the people that's, that, that's encircled you? Who are those people? What are they doing in life? Are they doing things that that's positive in life or are they doing just the random crap that y'all been doing for 20 years because y'all went to school together and this is just your hangout group. So you have to think about what it is that you're wanting to do, where it is that you're wanting to go, whether that's in life, with career, with business, whatever that is. And then think about the people that are around you. The people that are around you, can they help you get to that point? Are they going to motivate you to get to that point? Are they going to, you know, clap for you and pat you on the back when you do a good job? Or are they now talking you out of moving forward to going for that dream. If, mm -hmm. if they're talk, trying to talk you out of it, you know, and there's a lot of sayings that people say, oh, you think you something now, huh? <laughs> you think you went to this, this class and now you come back trying to educate everybody on the block, right? You know, so it, you have to think about who are those people that are feeding negativity into your environment? Mm -hmm. Be careful of who you allow into your environment because that, you know, there's a saying, you are the result of the five people that surround you, right? Yeah. So who are your five people that are surrounding you? Who are those five people? If they are not pushing you forward, if they're not motivating you to go forward, if they're not patting you on the back or giving you a hand clap, they don't need to be there, not for this purpose in life. Um, and so, yes, you write all of those people down. Write the names down of the people who are around you. And then you determine whether they are serving a good purpose in your life, whether they are ready to move forward with really good things and positive on a positive note. And then your places. If you're too ashamed to put your hand up in the air about the places that you frequent, maybe that's a place that you shouldn't go, right? Maybe it's not serving you in the best purpose. If you are, you know, here's the, here's the thing, a mental place. If there's a place that you go in your mental space that's not the most positive, but you're too ashamed or you're too afraid to speak that out loud, you don't need to go there anymore. That's not serving you any good. That's putting you possibly in a state of depression, anxiety, and fear, and more self-doubt will creep in that way. 
And then possessions, as I said, it's not just about material things, but it includes material things. You know, stop buying all this crap. You're trying to fill a void, you know, deal with the void. Don't worry about, you know, what can, what can you stuff in that space? No, deal with what's in front of you, understand what's in front of you um, and face it. Face it, face it, face it. And, you know, and then with the mental part of it, of your fears and doubts, those are possessions. You are holding on to that. When you hold on to something, that's now a possession, right? Yeah. And so you have to be willing to reveal those things that you are possessing. Fear, doubt. You know, what is it, what's this, what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's not allowing you to take that step forward? To What is it that's not allowing you to celebrate yourself in the small things that you're accomplishing? And a lot of times we are accomplishing small things every single day, but we don't give ourselves credit for it because yeah. we don't see the big, big thing that we're doing. And it's okay to celebrate you. Celebrate yourself. And if nobody else claps for you, clap for yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, so good. I love this. It's something that I think especially high achievers and really driven entrepreneurs overlook is that celebrate yourself piece. I do it. I talk about it a lot with my people and it's like, you're training your brain that you don't deserve a reward and you're sending a signal to the universe that you don't know how to receive when you don't celebrate yourself. So it's such a powerful tool that most people Absolutely. overlook. I want to dig though. You said so many important things there that I'm like, oh, I could have asked you a lot of questions while you were talking. There's something I think that people get really afraid when they're up leveling themselves and evolving into new parts of themselves and they start to shift. It's, it's a little bit scary because often you do change your social circle and you change who you're hanging out with. And, you know, so speak to that a little bit. Like, what's some advice for listeners who are like, yeah, I, I, cause I, I know people experience this where they're like, crap, do I limit myself so that I can stay comfortable with the people around me? What would you advise there? I would advise you to leave the people behind. <laughs> and here's the thing, here's the thing, you know, okay, here's another thing. I love sayings because a lot of times most sayings from back in the day are still true to this day. There's a saying that those who came with you can't go mm. with you. Yeah. That's, That's a powerful thing. That is a powerful saying. Those yeah. that came with you cannot go with you. And it's not saying that you are leaving them behind and you're forgetting about them. It's about you are now moving on to your next level of greatness. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to move to that next level with you. And that's okay. You have, but really, truly, you have to be the one to decide, okay, this is where the road ends for us. This is where the fork is now created. It's now for me to take this other road in order to continue to reach my greatness. Mm -hmm. And once you get there, you can then turn around and say, hey, this is what I have going on. You mm -hmm. know, I can pull you along now that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I can put, I can reach back to you and help you, but if you're if that person's not ready to be elevated, you have to leave them where they are because really and truly, it's a part of mindset. They have each person has to deal with their own mindset in the best way that they can and how they know how to. And until they reach out to get help in doing that, they're going to stay stuck where they are. But don't ever feel that you are you know leaving people behind. Don't ever feel that it's a bad thing to move forward. You know, don't ever feel that, you know, you're now, you know, too good because you have a new social circle. No, this social circle is all about you moving forward in your business, moving forward in your career, moving forward in life in some kind of way. And there's nothing wrong with that. The only person that really has a problem with that is the person that's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Because they have, to, they have to beat their own mentality. They have to beat out their own mentality in order yeah. to win. Yeah. And it's so much more likely that you're going to help lift them up if you do you and shine your light. I love the, you know, there's all those sayings like, don't shrink yourself into places you no longer fit. Yeah. You know, don't dim your light so that other people's don't, other people don't feel small around you. And I know because I, I've had this, you know, one of my biggest yeah. fears was like outshining other people. And it's something I still work on. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's hard because you do, you let go of that comfort zone of like, here in this space, I can, I can be safe in the protection of knowing those people will always be there. And as I, you know, really shifted myself on my personal growth and development journey, I, things just start to fall away. And something mm -hmm. I really, I, I had pop into my mind one day was, you know, there, if you think about loss, like, you know, for people listening, I'm putting loss in, in quotations. It's like, loss is really just aligning with things that are more congruent with your future self, with your future path. 
So it's not really a loss, it's just a transformation in a new direction. And the cool thing is that sometimes the paths will diverge and then they come back together. You know, so I've had friends who I, who dropped away and then they did their own growth path. I did my own growth path and we come back together. Sometimes it's a permanent change, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you know, it's like, don't let people hold you back from growing to your fullest potential. And if they are people who want to hold you back from growing to your fullest potential, they're probably not people you want in your inner circle because Absolutely. you then can expand and reach whatever, wherever you want to go, because you're, you're allowing people to suck you down and hold you back. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a big Absolutely. one, you know, it's because it's scary to lose our connections. It, it is. It can it, be. It can be scary. But here's yeah. the thing. As long as you are certain about what it is that you are doing, mm -hmm. and as long as you are confident in what your desires are, yes. you will have other people in alignment with you who will automatically come into your life. I yeah. promise you that it happens every single time. And here's the thing, even yeah. when I do a shift, even, you know, and this is, I don't talk about anything that I have not experienced. I don't teach anything that I haven't experienced. I have experienced all of this. I've experienced going to different levels and having to shift my circles because the circles that I was in, the circles that I were in, that I was in, they weren't ready to go to the next level. They were ready to go to a new level. Yeah. However, I knew that in order for me to go to my next level, I had to now move over here. I had to, you know, bob and weave a little bit different than I had before. I don't think, oh, I am not going to say think, but I know for sure. You have to just make sure that you are so sure mm -hmm. of what it is that you want in life. When you are sure of what you want in life, you start speaking that. Speak it to yourself. Speak it out loud. Write it down. Write it over and over. Just you, because that's you putting it into the universe. That this is what you desire. This is what you want. When you put it out to the universe, the universe is going to respond to you. And I definitely believe in you know when you put out positivity, positivity comes back. And yeah. when you put out negativity, negativity is going to come back because that's what you are attracting. And so. I, I always tell people to speak life into the things that they want. Speak life into what it is that you are really desiring to happen in your life and watch the shift start to happen. And it's not going to be something that you will have to force. You don't have to force it to happen. It's going to happen on the map. People will just start showing up. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll message you. Hey, I noticed you here. I'd love to have a conversation with you and find out more about you, you know, and then they'll say, well, I need you to meet this person over here, or I need you to meet that person over there. Oh my gosh, like you two would be amazing. That happens all the time for me because I yeah. am very sure of what it is that I really want to do. Yeah. And so I encourage everybody to do it. I encourage everybody to go on a journey of self-assessment, journal, write it down, believe it, speak it, and just do it. Yeah. Yes. I want I, I want to pick your brain here because I, I mean, I so agree. I'm so into law of attraction, law of deliberate creation, like really getting clear on what you want. And I think that people can get really stuck because sometimes they don't know what they want. I want to hear your take on why that's the case. Why do people get stuck not knowing what they want? It's not even about not knowing what they want. I think it's more of a fear of speaking it out into, speaking it for other people to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. really truly um, when you are not clear on what it is that you really want in life, that's because you don't really know who you are right now. Mm -hmm. You can't walk into something else. You can't walk into, you know, oh my gosh, this multi-million dollar business. You can't walk into being an accomplished anything if you don't know who you are right now. So you have to, you have to take that journey of knowing who you are, being okay with who you are right now, flaws and all. And that's one thing you have to acknowledge your flaws. If you don't acknowledge your flaws, I promise you somebody else is going to bring the, bring them to life. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how, how do I deal with this? Now you have to go back and do some PR real quick because you have to address the reality of it. So you have to be real. You have to be authentic, be genuine about it. And once you do that, you can then start to move forward. But the whole fear in, in not knowing what it is that you want, that's really just you not being not having the real courage that you need to just speak it to the universe. Yeah. Really, truly, that's how I feel about it. Because once you have the courage to speak it, 
you can start moving. And, he, and here's, another, here's another thing. When you start speaking it, your actions start aligning with what it is that you're speaking. Yeah. And that's when your whole alignment with other people come into play because they're yeah. noticing how you're moving and shaking, how you bobbing and weaving. They're noticing all of that. And so you have to, first of all, know who you are right now, accept who you are, tell other people who you are right now. And so that, that when you get ready to change or you get ready to shift, I should say, it's not, it's not that big of a deal because, you know, she told us this is where she is and this is where she's trying to go. So it's automatic that it's going to come, right? Yeah. So you just have to be okay with speaking it and being okay with people knowing it. And I think the whole fear, another part of that fear comes from if I don't succeed after I've said this, now how are people going to look at me? Yeah. Yeah. The failure, the fear of failure. Yeah. And then even the fear of success sometimes like, but then the fear of success is the outshining other people could, could that could be there too. I, I love what you're saying. So in, in, when you're speaking, what's coming to mind for me is this, this place where we get stuck with injected value systems. So I, I work with people on value systems, stepping into their zone of genius, that type of thing. And it's like, often we believe what we can have based on what we've already had. And we believe we, we shape our wants and desires around what we think we should have based on the people around us. And so I think that ties so much into the reveal and release part that you're talking about in the people, because if you're hanging out with people who are holding you back, it's shaping what you want and desire because you're going to limit yourself from moving forward because the bubble is small your comfort zone is small, you know? So if you want to expand beyond that, you got to start playing bigger in your mind first and knowing yourself in a new way and thinking like, yeah. okay, what would happen if I let myself dream bigger, be bigger, feel bigger, do bigger, you know, like it shifts. And then you start to attract um, yeah. people that way. You know, it's like a, the talk about, you know, if you hang out with a whole bunch of doll, doll, your dollar heirs, you're going to be a dollar heir. If you hang out with like, you know, a hundred thousand heirs, you're going to be a hundred thousand heir, millionaire, billionaire, you know, and it just keeps expanding, but you've got to be the one to initiate that by believing it's possible and, enjoy, and, and taking the courageous step to be on that ride and on that journey. Yes. I yes. love that. I absolutely love that. So no, I'm not trying to be surrounded by dollar heirs. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, but I mean it's like I love what you're saying too it's like how you start to show up that way and then you attract the people your way I have the same thing all the time I'm like pinching myself like what I'm getting the coolest yeah. opportunities and meeting the neatest people and I'm like that would have never happened had I not been willing to break out of the old molds of myself and my belief system about you know self-doubt and fear and lack of courage and all those things imposter syndrome and you know it's like okay and I and exactly like your pillars and your roadmap I started with the first step you know, I started by taking a step in the direction of my vision, something I want you to talk about, because I think you're so powerful in this way. And it's one of your pillars. Are you, are you, I want to make sure you're still hearing. Are you there? Cause you're timing out a little on my end. You're good. Oh, I'm here. here. Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay. You're, I think you're coming back. Um, talk a little bit about that cultivation, I know we're talking about it in terms of, you know, why people are sometimes afraid to step into to their vision. How, how do you help people articulate a why or a vision? What, what are some steps there that you could offer to listeners? Got it. So here's the thing. A lot of people, when you're planning for a goal or a vision or whatever it is that you want, I know a lot of coaches tell you to start with your why. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm not here to diffuse any of that I'm not here to cause a disrupt or in or mess up with all of that because yes your why is important however it's not just about why you're doing it because a, a lot of people don't understand their why you know sometimes they say well I want to make x amount of dollars okay well I want to make sure that my kids see me doing something positive okay okay well let's go a little bit deeper than that you know, so I always, I have another thing I've called the six whys, <laughs> the six whys. And it's when you write down your first why, now ask the question again and ask, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. So you keep digging deeper and keep digging deeper and keep digging deeper until it makes you cry. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when you're really down to the nitty gritty of why you're doing this, because a lot of times you're not doing it for your kids. A lot of times you're doing this because of something that happened to you when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You're doing something that happened to you or that you experienced when you were younger. It's not about 
you want to make sure your children see you doing something well. It's not about you wanting to make this amount of dollars. Now, if you want to make this amount of dollars, why do you want to make this amount of dollars? And yeah. it's going to be because I grew up and I didn't have much. Okay, so why did you grow up and didn't have much? Well, it's because, you know, I was raised in a single parent, single parent home and my mom wasn't able to care for all of us the way she wanted. She had a job, but it really wasn't enough. Or we were on, you know, um, welfare or something like that, right? Okay, so why was that? right so you just keep digging deeper until because it may be because you're doing this because of somebody else it's not necessarily yeah. about you so i don't ever say you know it's about me and wanting to make sure that my kids are comfortable my kids are going to be comfortable regardless because of what i'm doing but why i'm doing it is because of something that happened so long ago that i may have just forgotten about but it's in my mind somewhere it's in there it's not a surface level thing you have to dig deep to really find your why but i always tell people to start with your end results why do you want this to happen what is the end result that you want people to walk away with you know so even with my coaching and i'm, I'm helping them you know they're coming to me for a reason and you know a lot of times it's how do i get my business to become profitable how do i create additional streams of income how do i start a business so they want to know the 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 how part of it because so many people tell them what they need to do but nobody's really telling them how to actually do it so i come from the tech side of it and i break it down and simplify it okay this is all you really need to do to make this happen for you mm -hmm. and so with that it starts with your end result what do you want people to walk away with what do you want people to feel how do you want them to feel what do you want them to know what knowledge do you want them to walk away with and so that's pretty much how it goes for me it never starts with why you're doing it because why a lot of people are surface level with that they're never going to dig deep enough on their own to understand their their main why they're doing it mm, that's so juicy everyone listening you need to rewind and go back to the beginning of that question because that is powerful I, it, what it brought up for me was when I was writing out my mission and vision, you know, like I, I exactly like you're saying, it's just keep going. Why, 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 why get to the core and the root until you cry. And, and I mean, everyone that is hearing this, like, that's where you want to be when you're cultivating your why is that place of like, yes, I just got to the core of why I'm inspired to do this. Uh, for me, it came up when I, you know, I, I, it always comes up for me with related to my kids and, and men, men money often. So it's like, you know, I wrote down, I want to end the intergenerational transmission of poverty in my, in my family, especially for women. And so it was like, I have two girls. Yeah. I have a, I have a son as well. And, but it was like, I want to teach my children how to build wealth. I was never, my parents had taught me a lot of amazing things, but like, you know, that wasn't a, that kind of conversation didn't quite exist in the way that I needed it to. And so, you know, being yeah. on food stamps and then building my business, it was like a big motivator for me to be like, I want, I want to take my kids on a world tour. I want to be able to take my kids on a shopping spree and be like, don't even look at the prices. <laughs> you know, like I want to teach yeah. my kids how to build intergenerational wealth and leave a legacy because that matters to me. And that's when I get to that piece where I'm like, yeah, that's the juicy nugget of, inspiration for me you know like that's the the why for me the why for working mm -hmm. with my clients is that i want to help them dig deep into their inspiration of what makes them thrive and what makes them feel yeah. like I, I always end this pod this podcast by saying thrive and feel alive and that's like the core of me it's like yeah. i want to help you get set up to thrive and feel alive because what's better than that <laughs> so that was that was good i love that love I'm gonna rewind that and listen to it again <laughs> um <laughs> Sometimes I don't even realize what I'm saying. I'm just like, okay, well, let's get to it. Okay? Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yes, indeed. I love, this, I love this conversation. Thank you for allowing me to come on and speak with you today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's been amazing. Okay. So, so for listeners, will you share the top three max potential habits that you believe got you where you are today? Absolutely. Faith, perseverance, and consistency. <laughs> Nice. Easy. <laughs> okay. I, and I, I really think all three of those go together. They yeah. pretty much go hand in hand, um, at least for me. Um, and like I said, you know, my journey of an 18 year journey to motherhood is the founding thing that I always talk about to get people to understand of what severely is. However, having faith that something's going to work out for you, having faith that you're going to reach your goal, having faith that you know, you're going to 
do whatever it is that you've dreamed about because I don't believe that dreams just happen to you. Those are actually visions that can that can actually come true. All right. Mm -hmm. And so when you have the faith and belief that it can actually happen, you now just need to put the work in. Put the work in. That's where your perseverance comes into play. Putting the work in and not worrying about how long it's taking. Not worrying about not worrying about if it's really going to work out. No, you just put the work in because you have the faith, you put the work in, and now just being consistent about your work being consistent in what it is that you're doing, you know, mm -hmm. you have, and that's where, you know, the persistence, um, that consistency come in um, with the perseverance. So it all goes hand in hand, but those are really, you know, the main three, the top three, I should say, um, habits of just having faith, your perseverance, which is your work and being consistent with your work. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I love that. And I think when you have those three in alignment, then your success is absolutely inevitable. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, <laughs> I told somebody, you know, there's this whole thing, the book called The Secret. There's a movie about it, right? The Secret. Well, I think they got it wrong because they could have wrapped that whole movie up, that whole book in one sentence. Perseverance equals success. Okay. The secret is perseverance. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. The secret is perseverance. The yeah. secret is perseverance. And you know, I love how you define, you know, perseverance at the beginning of our, um, our, our talk here, but I yeah. like to swag it up a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Let, what's your definition of perseverance? So my definition, it goes along with Merriam-Webster. However, I like to say that perseverance is defined as your will, your drive, your persistence to keep going, no matter how long it may take even though you don't know how long the journey is going to take, even though you don't realize that it may not happen. And even if it never happens, you keep going no matter what, no matter what, no matter the challenge, the obstacle, the person, the place, nor the possession that tries to come in your way, you keep going. You find ways to go around it. You find ways to go over it or you find a way to knock it down and walk right on it. You just keep going, never giving up. That's my definition of perseverance. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> so powerful. So, okay. I want to, I it, like, I know we have been going for a while, but I, I have to say this because I'm so curious or I want to highlight for listeners. It's interesting because I'm really into law of attraction and universal principles and things like that. And in the secret, I think something that you've highlighted that is really important is the belief part behind the perseverance. And it's, it's, you know, what we've been talking about connecting to your why, but even getting deeper than the why to get to the emotional space of going like, why, 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 why do I want it until I get to a tear in my eye. And, and all that ha has to do is also you talking about the development and cultivation of confidence. So in that confident place, we believe in ourselves that makes our why attached to how we know ourselves. Well, Oh, there you're there. Okay. How we know ourselves well. And then, and then you can persevere because you have all of those parts aligned, you know? So it's like, yeah. in the, it, I think that it's the belief in yourself is pr principal key to be able to persevere because if you commit to something that you don't believe is possible for yourself, it makes perseverance really challenging. So I think that you, you know, like tying all those things together, you've done an incredible job. I'm sure people will want to read your book. So tell us where is the best place that people can find you? Well, I'm on social media. I am on, on Instagram as mom coach Tamika because my target audience are helping moms um, okay. build their businesses and, 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 encouraging them um, through perseverance. And on Facebook, you can find me at Tamika Empowers. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much how to easily get in contact with me. But you can find me on either way at Tamika Chapman. <laughs> okay. I'm Tamika Chapman um, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. And then your book, I know you're not, are you not certain about the link yet? If you are announced it, if not, it'll be in the show notes for everybody that they can link it there. Yes. So the power of perseverance is my inaugural um, anthology. And as we stated before, I have 10 trailblazing women who share their stories, their challenges, and how they overcame those challenges and what it took for them, what it looked like, what it felt like. And now to be on the other side and can share their journeys with other women to 
and, and for them to see what, what it looks like, to see, let them see what a challenge and what overcoming looks like and that they can too smile again, even if they're going through it right now. And so that book is being released on July 28th. Oh my gosh. And it'll probably, I know it's going to be one amazing, <laughs> one amazing book that is going to um, be a global um a global disruptor yeah of fear I, love and your, doubt I love your and vision it's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah and, for, and 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 by the time this is released it'll be you'll, it'll be released so people can find it and read it yeah. and it, i'll definitely be posting it so people can link straight to it in show notes absolutely yeah and so in it and do right you, now do you give this, this oh, Sorry. Can you hear me? <laughs> we, yeah, we had a timeout for a second. I was about to ask you a question and you talked, so I stopped. <laughs> Good, keep going. No, I was just going to say that the website is thepowerbook.net. The okay, thepowerbook.net. Okay, yes. and in it, you share the women's stories and then you give your five pillars of perseverance? In the book, they share their 10 journeys. Okay. Um, yes, in the intro, I started out with allowing people to understand the five pillars of perseverance that's needed to actually um, see success. Okay. To see to overcome. And so, yes, that's it. That's a part of the intro um, to the book. I am so excited about it. Um, oh, oh my gosh. Every woman that I talked to, I actually just had a coaching session yesterday. No, on Saturday. I'm sorry. On Saturday. And it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> absolutely amazing because I took her through the same steps, allowing yeah. her to understand she, Everything that you really need, you already have within. You already have within. You just have to be able to tap into it, recognize it, and tap into it in order to move forward with what it is that you're wanting to do in life. Awesome. So good. Okay. There have been a ton of gems of wisdom here. Thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing you. your knowledge. Really appreciate you. Okay, everyone out there listening, if you like what you heard, definitely be sure to order Tamika's book and take a screenshot of this wherever you're at in the podcast right now and blast it out to social media channels and share something that you learned on the podcast today. There were a lot of great tips. I know these are conversations I have with my people all the time and it's to me the core foundation of leading a really empowered life and building a successful business. Perseverance is key. So, and, and a lot of what we've talked about today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I am signing off for everyone else. Thanks for being here. The show wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a reason to have this show without all of you. So thank you for being here and I will be back next week. I hope you have a max potential week where you thrive and feel alive. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Max Potential Habits Podcast. If you're liking what you've heard, it would be so incredibly awesome if you would subscribe to the channel and leave a five-star rating and a written review. This helps me help more people while we grow our NFA community so we can rock it out together. For Max Potential Habits resources, go to nfacoaching.com where you can access all of my resources. There's free ebooks, PDF checklists, a journal template, a business mindset meditation kit, and so much more. Plus, links to NFA Coaching on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you're super serious about up-leveling, there's also a link to schedule a free consult to work with me in group or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Until next time, I hope you have a Max Potential Habits Day where you get inspired to do whatever it takes to transform into the most empowered version of yourself so you can lead a rich, thriving, kick-ass life and business.